Hello everyone, my name is Marcus Toussaint and today I'll be talking to you about the Air Exhibition Experiment and I am the lead for this experiment. So first, um, for the introduction, an air conditioner is basically a reversible heat pump. And what I mean by reversible is that um, a heat pump, um, you think it can only pump heat into an environment, or an air conditioner can both pump heat and pull heat um, if you reverse the process. So it's found in, um, it's commonly found in most homes, businesses, um, in here there's an air conditioner system, um, automobiles use air conditioner systems, um, and it involves four um, main components, <laughs> the compressor, the condenser, um, the capillary tubes, which serve as an expansion, and this is incorrect. It shouldn't be reservoir. It should be um, um, the evaporator. Sorry. It shouldn't be reservoir. It should be evaporator. So you have compressor, condenser, expansion, which is the capillary tube, the outlet system, and the evaporator. So the objective for this experiment is to both perform thermodynamic analysis, um, of the air conditioner and to investigate the performance versus the charge number of freon that you put in the air conditioner. So this is the basic air conditioner um, schematic that we'll be using. And you see it, uh, it shows the process as I described previously. You have your um, condenser, you have your capillary tube and your reservoir which serves as the expansion system, um, your evaporator and your reversing valve on and your compressor. So the procedures. For startup, first you want to make sure that the heat pump is off. Um, you want to make sure the air conditioning unit is off. You want to check all the temperatures and pressures to make sure the temperatures are all ambient, which is room temperature, and the pressures are all the same. If not, you need to calibrate those. For setup, you want to fill the um, freon tank to its maximum level. So you want to put uh, the maximum level of freon into the air compression, uh, the air conditioning unit. And the unit should be about 13 to 14 pounds. Um, for data acquisition, what we'll be doing is we'll measure the temperature entering and exiting the evaporator, and we'll measure the velocity of the air entering the evaporator. Also, we'll reduce the levels of charge in the air compressor or in the air conditioning unit. And as we reduce that charge level, as we um, lower the freon content, we will be measuring temperature and pressure at every stage. And lastly is the shutdown phase. You just want to make sure um, you empty the tank, um, make sure everything shuts down correctly for the next group. So here's your ideal uh, um, TS diagram. And I show the process again, which is um, the evaporator, compressor, condenser, expansion. You can see your TS diagram here. It shows that um, in one to two, you have to work in your compressor. It does work. Um, you have uh, from two to three over your condenser, you have your heat out, which is normally um, you want the heat going into the environment. And you have from three to four, your expansion. Um, you have from four to one, your heat in, and that's you pulling heat from the inside of the room, and that's later um, released to the outside environment. Um, here's your idealized uh, pH diagram, um, and this process is the same as the one previously shown um, here. So you have your compressor from one to two, your condenser, your expansion, and then your evaporator at the bottom. And it shows how the pressure is related to um, for this system. Um, next, the thermodynamic equations that you'll be using to uh, perform all of your calculations. Um, for the compressor, of course, it's uh, assumed to be an adiabatic process, and it's assumed to be isotropic. Um, you have your work is equal to um, the enthalpy across uh, two and one. No, sorry, the, yeah, it's two and one. And um, let's see, the capillary tubes 
Um, that's the expansion. Um, that's the process from three to four. Um, H3 is equal to H4. Um, and the evaporator, you calculate uh, your key by the H1 minus the H4. Um, those equations um, are used to calculate CFP, which is uh, the performance of the air conditioner. It is uh, denoted by the magnitude of the desired quantity, which is your Q, over the magnitude of the expenditure, which is your work. Um, and so typically, COP for air conditioner ranges from two to four, and um, theoretically, the value that you calculate is usually only a, a, a the value that you calculate is a fraction of the idealized value. Um, the value that I calculated using the pressures um, given from the lab manual, I got a COP of 7.4, um, which I mean, normally idealized it would be anywhere from two to four, so um, that is a fraction of the 7.4 uh, 7 that I calculated. Um, sources of error in this experiment. Um, you just want to ensure that the Freon tank is uh, at max when you start. And the measurements um, are taken with instruments that have uncertainty. And you amplify that uncertainty, of course, by using um, them in your calculations. So you want to make sure that you uh, provide as accurate measurements as possible. Um, just carefully read all the charge levels and all uh, measurements. Thank you. That concludes my presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, uh, okay. uh, one of the main differences, I guess, is just uh, in the TS diagram, the Carnot cycle, uh, which is, uh, I guess, uh, automotive engine is denoted by the Carnot cycle. Um, the process from two to one is different. Um, in the Carnot, you don't reach uh, super saturated. You're, you don't have a, a mixed phase of liquid and vapor. Um, and so um, that process is a lot different. And this is why um, I guess you couldn't just use the Carnot cycle in an air conditioner because you need those phase transfers to release the heat um, to the environment and to pull the heat from the room. Any Does anyone else have any other questions? And I didn't hear that last. What do you think you're using for the 7.4 value uh, as opposed to why you got a higher the range of CO2? Well, um, again, this is um, this is idealized. We do assume that the process is isentropic. We do assume that the process is at your bed. Um, and we know that's not true. Um, usually there is some heat loss in the system, there is some heat gain in the system. Um, also, usually there's some uh, work loss in the system as well. Um, and so in the uh, actual experiment, we'll see that we will get uh, results that's significantly lower than the idealized uh, coefficient of performance in that condition. So, um, yes, this is the calculated, uh, oh, sorry, this is the calculated um, idealized. So I base these on, I base this calculation on um, the ideal situations in the lab manual and the ideal equations that I showed, which assumes that the process is isentropic and adiabatic. So my numbers, since it's um, the ideal numbers will be higher than the actual numbers um, arrived at in the lab. Now, the 7.4, um, as far as how high, some internet uh, literature said your calculated COP could be as high as a tenth larger than the calculated. So if you calculate um, a value of three or two point something in the lab, it can be up to ten times larger than that when you do an ideal calculation. And so you can see there's a significant loss 
um, due to the assumptions that we make. So, um, I guess I, I got pretty low values according to Any other questions? All right, thank you. That concludes my report.